Fabiano asks, how do mnemonic seed words work? It looks like magic to me. Um, I believe it was Arthur C. Clarke who said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic to uh, a civilization that is not as advanced. And, um, I think one of the funny things about cryptography is that a lot of cryptography, a lot of mathematics involved in cryptography, seems like magic, and it takes a while to get used to and understand how it works. So first of all, let's let's describe what mnemonic seed words are. So mnemonic seed words encode a specific amount of randomness. They're basically a number, and that number is represented by words. But those words are simply an encoding of that number, almost like a lookup table. So what does that mean exactly? If you use a standard mnemonic, which is a BIP39 mnemonic, then there is a dictionary of 2048 words. And this dictionary of 2048 words has been carefully selected so that the words do not appear similar, and you can always figure out which word uh, you're looking at just from the first four letters of that word. So four letters gives you a unique word in this dictionary, but the letters don't matter. What matters is you have 2048 uh, words. Think of each of them as a symbol. Um, and then if you have, for example, a 12 word mnemonic, then that 12 word mnemonic encodes, 2048 to the power of 12 possible numbers. Essentially, each word represents about 11 bits of information in binary. And those 11 bits can be used to construct um, a, a key, essentially a seed. The seed is 128 bits, for example, if you have 12 words, or uh, 256 bits if you have 24 words. And from that 128-bit or 256-bit number, um, your wallet will then produce a master private key through a process of stretching. Stretching is basically applying a hash algorithm again and again and again and again. Uh, in the case of BIP39, the hash algorithm is applied 2,000 times together with a passphrase, an optional passphrase, to produce a master public key. And that master public key is then used with, again, repeated uh, uh, hashing functions to produce a series of private keys. And these private keys can be used to do transactions. So you start with a long number, 128 bits. That long number gets expressed as 12 English words from a dictionary of 2,048 words. Those words are then stretched through a hashing algorithm to produce an even longer number, which is used as your master private key. That's usually a 512-bit number. And that 512-bit number is used uh, again with repeated hashing to produce a sequence of private keys. In fact, a tree of private keys, and that's a hierarchical deterministic wallet or HD wallet. Each one of those private keys can then produce a public key and an address, and you can do transactions. If you take that mnemonic seed and you put it into a new wallet, the new wallet can basically recreate that entire process and produce all of the private keys. Now, there's an infinite number of private keys that can be produced from a seed in a specific sequence. So what your wallet will do is it will start from the beginning, and it will keep looking on the blockchain to see if those keys have been used by looking at the addresses and whether they ever had a balance or a transaction related to them. And it will stop looking once it's found 20 empty addresses, assuming that you haven't used any of those and you didn't get that far in the sequence. And that's how a mnemonic seed is imported. All of this is part of two standards, BIP39 for mnemonic words and BIP32 for hierarchical deterministic wallets. All right, quick question from Barnabas that's a follow-up for that. Um, the words themselves are not selected by you. The words in a mnemonic phrase are produced from a random number, 128-bit or 256-bit no random number. And when we say random, what does that mean? 
Does that mean true random? Does that mean cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator? Does that mean pseudo-random number generator? Um, it really depends. You can generate the seed entropy in any way you like. You could use some kind of process that uses quantum fluctuations um, in order to um, produce a true hardware random number. Um, but for most purposes, a cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator, such as that one provided by your computer hardware, and with sufficient seeding, uh, which means wiggling your mouse around, typing on the keyboard, etc., will produce uh, sufficient entropy, sufficient randomness for the use of seeds. Theoretically, at least, if you wanted to, you could take um, some casino dice, uh, which are properly balanced, well designed. Um, and carefully audited dice. You could put them in a shoebox, you could shake them together and keep throwing dice, and using that produce a 128-bit random number, and then from that encode it as a mnemonic phrase of 12 English words. There is no requirement in the specification as to how you produce the randomness. Susanna asks, finally, can the mnemonic seed be imported to another wallet? Yes, one of the great features of mnemonic seeds, as long as they follow a well-supported standard, such as BIP39, um, can be moved from any BIP39 compatible to any other BIP39 compatible wallet. And you can import a seed, and it should be able to find all of your transactions, addresses, and keys. Now, you can also run the same mnemonic seed on multiple wallets simultaneously, and that means you can spread, spend from all of them. Um, but of course, keep in mind that possession of the seed means possession of your funds. So be very, very careful when managing seeds. The more places you type it in, the more places you put it, the more places you restore it from backup, uh, the more likely you expose it to a system that has been compromised. <clears throat> 